everybody, it's Carpaccio with the Weekly Pele Report for April 10th, 2024. And uh, how did you enjoy that eclipse? Woo! Whoa, we're taking some powerful medicine. Conjunct Chiron, the wounded healer. The wound becomes the medicine. And nothing stops. It keeps on going, keeps on giving. Set the stage, that new moon set the stage for the next month. And really the next six months, but I'll talk about that. Right now, that moon has kept on moving. Oh, and the waves keep coming in. Uh, into Taurus. Yeah, moon's in Taurus today. And... Um, she is moving along. She's going to conjunct Jupiter and Uranus. Um, and tomorrow, uh, Thursday, she's going to go into Gemini. And, uh, yeah, it's that Gemini, she's going to square the Mars-Saturn conjunction. That Mars-Saturn conjunction is exact today. Today. But you may have felt it coming on. And uh, you may be feeling it a little more when the moon squares it on Friday. Uh, by uh, Saturday, she does, uh, you know, she quickly passes, squares Neptune, goes into Cancer, okay? And on Sunday, from Cancer, she squares Venus and Chiron. <laughs> so, happy moon squares, um, you know, by uh, Monday, she'll be moving into Leo. And, uh, you know, there, well, at the very, uh, what she's going to do really, okay, is uh, oppose Pluto and then come into a square, okay, with the Sun, Chiron, Mercury on Monday. That's what the chart is for. You can see that it's a little bit of a T-square there. Um, I'm going to talk about that a little bit, but yeah, there's lots to talk about. And uh, let me find a spot here uh, where I'm not going to get wet and there's no people around and uh, talk at you. Is that all that there is? Oh, sorry. I thought so. Uh, the sun and Mercury. Mercury retrograde is going back, back, back. And uh, you know, he's going to go all the way back to Chiron, actually. Uh, but on uh, Friday... He's uh, going to conjunct the sun. So uh, I'm going to read the Sabian symbol, I think, maybe for that one. We've got uh, a couple of things going on. I'm going to read the Sabian symbol for the Mars conjunct Saturn and the moon square the sun. And, uh, yeah, figure out what, the, what this week looks like for you. Um, yeah. All right, everybody. Well, it is, it's another Pele report under adverse circumstances. <laughs> I gotta say, I wanted to come out to the beach, but hey, there, there's, there's no beaches around Santa Cruz without people. <laughs> and I like to be in a quiet, meditative place uh, where I can focus and um, yeah. So this will be interesting, but hey, you know, you got to deal with adversity these days. This is part of the, you know, part of the story. And I'll just try not to get distracted. Focus, focus, focus. Mars conjunct Saturn need to focus. <laughs> Running up against blocks and obstacles and stoplights and delays and, oh man. <laughs> Before I get started, I want to announce a restructuring Mars-Saturn. And with this new moon eclipse, I'm restructuring the new paradigm school of astrology. In fact, I'm bringing a little more structure to it. Starting at the ground zero basics, boom. I'm going to be stepping us through along with the faculty. I've got Soul and Jessica and Brandy and Ganja, and we're all going to be, you know, uh, delivering the very basics, the elements, the modalities, the signs, and the plan. I mean, 
So if you're into, you know, if you want to understand the beginning of the Pele Report a little more and where I get all this stuff, ah, you may want to check out the school. The link is going to be below of the video in the notes. And what else is going on? Uh, I am also in the midst of doing the uh, astrology of sexuality, uh, taking uh, Sun, Moon, Venus, and Mars through each one of the signs of the Zodiac uh, with Brandy Joy, uh, a fantastic evolutionary astrologer, teaches Tantra, magic, all kinds of stuff. Uh, uh, posted the first one again uh, last uh, weekend, Aries and Taurus. And uh, this next week we'll be doing uh, Gemini and Cancer and do two signs uh, for the next uh, six weeks. Uh, that's just on YouTube. I'll put the link uh, below um, and you can check that out. Also, I'm being a little busy bee these days. <laughs> anyway, yeah, yeah, uh, we got those things going on. And this is the time of new beginnings. Um, you know, even with Mercury retrograde, I want to really look at that. Um, but today I want to also, uh, you know... Uh, you know, to talk to you about it's not just this week because we know that the next solar eclipse is six months from now, and these eclipses happen on the north node of the moon and on the south node of the moon. So, you know, this was a solar eclipse on the north node of the moon, but we are going to have another solar eclipse, okay, on the south node of the moon come next October, and it's going to be, uh, it's in Libra, I, I'm pretty sure, right? So um, the first one's in Libra, then there's one in Scorpio, but uh, so yeah, these eclipses, they kind of set the tone for the six months, and so this sun, Chiron, moon, eclipse is saying that are the next six months is about healing the wounded warrior within each and every one of us. We all have situations, conditions where we feel impotent, we feel weak, we are not autonomous, we are codependent, where we uh, you know, just feel like our desires are not getting met and where we are maybe cowardly, maybe we have dropped the ball or failed in the past, dealing with failure, dealing with this wound of, I just can't do it, I'm not strong enough, I'm not powerful enough. It's like, ah, overwhelming with Saturn and Neptune and Pisces and all the karma coming back at us. I want to talk to you about, you know, Mars conjunct Saturn. We know Saturn is in Pisces. Okay, till 2026, we've got a couple more years of dealing with the planet of karma, the Lord of karma in the last sign of Pisces, sweeping up. Okay, it's like, uh, you know, the... The whole 28-year cycle of Saturn is closing like the show's over. <laughs> show's done. Audience has left. We're all alone, cleaning up, sweeping up the stage, you know, picking up the popcorn and uh, the candy wrappers. And, uh, yeah, yeah, and, and going back over, maybe we forgot our lines or we you know, blew our role in the play, or uh, it's a lot of reflection, particularly with Mercury retrograde, okay, you know, reflecting back, okay, for this three-week period of the retrograde, looking back over things, and it's coming back to Chiron, okay, and the North Node, and uh, maybe reflecting on, again, our wounds, and some of the conditioning, the childhood uh, patterning, the, yeah, you know, relationships that have, you know, just not, you know, panned out the way we thought, expected, or wanted, and, you know, 
maybe the need to be alone. Uh, I, and this is what the mantra is about today. I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but basically, you know, you can't always get what you want. I mean, that's just a... <laughs> I could probably use that <laughs> Rolling Stones freaking song every week. But I think this week I'm going to use Ride Captain Ride. <laughs> There's a mystery ship <laughs> out there that uh, failed, <laughs> ran off course, <laughs> boom, <laughs> sunk. <laughs> and that's even going to deal with an image that came up for me for the for the mantra that you know that in in my half awake half sleep uh you know uh space this morning i got another image but first first i want to just you know i'm going to go through a little bit of what's happening right now mars is conjunct saturn and you know it is happening at the 15th degree of Pisces. An officer instructing his men, maybe on a ship, <laughs> before a simulated assault under a barrage of live shells. <laughs> the need for thorough rehearsing before any complex and inherently dangerous social ritual in which power is used or evoked. In social life, as well as occultism, conflict is always to be expected. One must prepare for it. At the close of the great cycle, in the zodiac the sign Pisces, a deep-seated struggle is inevitable, at least to some extent. It can be a struggle against the ghosts of an unfulfilled past, the unlived life, or a confrontation with accumulated and often eluded karma. Indeed, Pisces refers to a period in the year during which many generals and admirals have been born. The rules of the game, at least in traditional forms of warfare, can be known. One may have to rehearse the dangerous play, but really, you know, uh, individual rashness cannot be tolerated. Even a deliberate sacrifice must play a well-conceived part, like the sacrifice of an important piece in a game of chess. Bobby Fischer, the strategy of chess. We need to maybe sacrifice a knight or a horse or a rook or a pawn. Hopefully not our queen. <laughs> but it all must be done consciously, like rehearse, because this is, you know, the end of this cycle, this accumulated karma. It's almost like there's no running away. This is, you know, facing the ghosts of the past. And with, and with Chiron, you know, involved in this picture, you know, it has to do with personal failure. And it has to do with our fears. Aries is about courage. The evolutionary intention of any planet in Aries, Venus, Mars especially, Sun, Moon, as you can look at with the, you know, our, uh, the, the astrology of sex, we talk about Aries. And this intention of Aries is to summon up the courage to go forward, overcoming the ghosts of the past, the doubts, the failures that stir up fears. And one of them can be the fear of being alone, the fear of being autonomous, right? Of being sovereign to myself. We are the ones we've been waiting for. I got this book, what is it? You, you are the one, you know, that you've been waiting for or something like that. I mean, it's like this, 
getting in touch with ourselves and loving ourselves despite all of our screw-ups, this is big. This is big. The next Sabian symbol. I mean, this is just like, what a time period this is. This is like so fried. And like I said, you know, with the, with the eclipses, I talked about it last week. You know, it doesn't, sometimes it affects us through the collective. It may not be you personally. I mean, I, I know I've talked to people who are like, hey, yeah, I've had some breakthroughs and things are opening up and I'm, I'm starting a new thing. I mean, if you're embracing change and going forward and, you know, you've got the courage or you're summoning your soldier and it's, a, you know, like, you know, more power to you. You know, you can also, don't forget, you know, the healer turns into the teacher. So, you know, you know, you may be creating, you know, experience now, stories now, history now that you will use to heal, to help others heal, to teach other people how you did it. How did you find the courage? How did you conquer your own demons? How did you face yourself how did you da, 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 you know so yeah I mean you can be doing it and yeah I mean that that is the call so I'm, I'm not saying that you know everybody is going down the drain but I'm saying that you know everybody in one way shape or form is now at this time over this next six month period you know really facing you know uh, and probably some of most of it, I think, is you know facing ourselves. This is the North Node in Aries. We we need to, you know, face ourselves. And so we come into now. The Moon has moved, and it's move. It continues to move, and it's going to come into the square. And that square, okay, is at twenty seventh degree of Cancer. Is going to come into the Sun squaring it right at 27 degrees of Aries and you know if the you know if the officer you know simulating a battle wasn't enough <laughs> now we've got a violent storm in a canyon filled with expensive homes gulp a confrontation with a social upheaval demanding the reconsideration of static values. The deeper implications of the scene depicted in the symbol are that the socio-cultural elite can always see its position and security challenged by forces beyond its control even if it may be successful in protecting itself from destruction. The individual may not be able to depend on the standards and values they have acquired through education and through a relatively sheltered and rich life. They have to rise to the occasion and perhaps to undergo an inner metamorphosis as a result of the crisis they have been able to accept as a personal challenge. Yeah. <laughs> Peace in luxury and intellectual development in terms of collective cultural values, reading books, then the challenge to meet a crisis situation produced by uncontrollable karmic forces that could lead to a successful catharsis. Again, the word karma comes up. And here we have catharsis instead of a healing crisis, but they are both very similar. And Pisces deals with forces beyond our control. This is a symbol of a violent storm is another, you know, kind of situation of a force beyond our control. 
So, you know, the ego has limited control. And all we can do is do our best. And then let it go. And I have to share that it's so bizarre because I just, I happened upon this beach. I was actually going to an inland park that my friend recommended, but I couldn't come out to the ocean without like sitting on the ocean. And I'm on creeks and rivers all the time. So I, I thought I'd come out here even if it's uh, not the ideal. But the image that I had was, I don't know if any of you have gone sailing. I love to sail. Uh, or just, you don't have to be on a sailboat, but you can just be on a motorboat or a cruiser or a canoe or a paddle boat or something that has an anchor. And I don't know if you have ever been out where you have thrown anchor and and then you pull back on the anchor. It's a hook, three hooks, right? And you hook yourself into a rock and you're solid and you're stable and you're there until it's time to go. Have you ever laid down your anchor and then tried to pick it up and it won't come? <laughs> The stuck anchor. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> nasty. I was actually going to do a mantra about the stuck anchor, not able to leave the harbor, <laughs> whatever. Um, but yeah, you know, if you've ever uh, done that, it's, it's, a, it's a bad situation where you have to dive down, follow the rope of the anchor, and try to free up, right? You know, unstick. You know, if it's boulders or rocks and it could be jammed in there and you gotta hold your breath long enough. And I mean, it's not, it's not fun. It's not fun to have a stuck anchor. But talk about Mars, Saturn, and Pisces. This is like a stuck anchor. Aries wants to go forward. Right, you know, Venus, North Node, Sun, you know, Chiro. I mean, it's like we want to go forward. The moon's, you know, coming around, you know, first quarter moon, break free, be independent, start new exercises, new relationships, new jobs. Just get out there. And here we've got <laughs> Mars, Saturn. You're not going anywhere until you deal with what you did, what you've done, where you're stuck, what's underneath your conscious, you know, your karma. You've got a stuck freaking anchor, dude. <laughs> your ship, hopefully you don't stay stuck and your ship just gets beat up by a storm and crashes like that one. Uh... Oh, baby. And let's say that you cannot free up your anchor. What, then what? You got to swim back up, get back in your boat. And if you got a rope holding that anchor, you got to cut the rope. If you got a chain holding that anchor, you got to get out your hacksaw and you got to saw through that chain to free yourself, to liberate yourself, to move on, right? And it's work and then it's scary. If that's your only anchor, oh great. Now I'm sailing and I was going to go around the world, but uh, I got no anchor. <laughs> I love that anchor. I need that anchor. I, that's my favorite anchor that I've ever had. <laughs> yeah, I mean, ooh. So this can bring up what is also Saturn? Grief. 
Mars, Saturn can bring up some grief and it is natural to grieve whenever there is a loss. And sometimes you just can't take it with you. So this can also be a time where we're starting a new beginning, a new identity, you know, down a new path, but it involves cutting a cord, letting go of maybe something valuable or something that you needed in order to sleep overnight at that sheltered bay and it's a drag but you gotta do it you gotta go on you gotta go forward and all of this is about you know and that, and that's the interesting thing about you know again that mars saturn is it's a rehearsal don't forget you know, it's like it, it, there needs to be a rehear like it thoughtfully, reflectively retrograde Mercury. Saturn is also reflection. Don't be rash. Don't be reckless. Maybe you don't even feel like diving down to free your anchor and just go, ah, shit. I'm going to just take my machete, chop that freaking rope and get out of here. That's that's not that that would be not really diving down into your own feelings your own emotions your own karmic history your own past to like really see how you are stuck or what you did to get stuck or what is what is it exactly that you are, are stuck on right you know I mean there's lessons Saturn is maturity. Saturn is growing up. Saturn is getting the most out of whatever happened. <laughs> right? <laughs> Sons of guns, man. Let me let me let me let me pull up the uh, uh, the mantra. I know deep down that what's blocking my light. The moon phew, rules the past. Uh, emotional, habitual patterns. Childhood conditioning. The need to be comfortable and secure. I mean, this moon came up and blocked the sun. The solar self the vitality, the power. This is the solar eclipse. And she was on her own north node. So this, she was you know, overpowering, right? She not only came and blocked the sun, but on her own north node, she, she just like, psh. so this was bringing up, okay, a lot of emotions. And, and, and actually, this can also be a time of karmic relationships, actually meeting, okay, a very powerful person that's going to help you achieve or move towards that North Node to help you become more sovereign, more autonomous, and possibly be in relationship. It's not like you have to be a hermit in order to be sovereign and true to yourself, you know? So this is, yeah, there's... But there's karma. There's, 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 wherever the moon's nodes are involved, there's a, there's a karma involved. So this is a very karmic time period. And we're kind of easing out of this eclipse season, is what they call it. But with Mercury retrograding back to Chiron in the node, um, I think it's stretching out the eclipse season a little longer. So we got, I think, another couple weeks of this and then Mars is still in Pisces for a couple weeks Mercury's retrograde you know for a couple of, and, and so I'd say by May things are going to Mercury's gonna go direct and then when Mars comes into Aries oh and that was the other thing the Ukraine Israel uh, Yemen you know I mean what's going on around the world and the whole economy and inflation 
I mean, you know, these, you know, these symbols also deal with social conditions. We cannot control governments. We cannot control the economy. And it, it, this is kind of a harbinger, I would say, of some tumultuous times ahead over these next six months in the United States. This election year is heating up. And, you know, the, 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 the conflict between the left and the right and the, you know, woke and the sleeping and the whatever that I did. I mean, you know, it's, it's, yeah. And, and globally, uh, the whole farmers, you know, the, the, the farmers and the, anyway, I'm not going to go into the mundane astrology so much. I will with my school, if you want to join the school, I, you know, I, I do, you know, regular check-ins all the time with my students. So, you know, if you want more of, you know, this kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Sign up, baby. <laughs> I know deep down that what's blocking my light is my fear of what lies ahead. So I promise to do what needs to be done and say all that needs to be said. The fear of what lies ahead. This is our, you know, this is our karma of this time is to trust that what comes to us out of the future, that is what is out of our control, whether it's nature or the economy or governments or our lover, uh, you know, th it is divinely inspired for our evolution and our personal growth. This is faith and hope in the divine, in Pisces, in Neptune. And so that is what, that's the tool that gives us the courage to go forward even with a loss, even maybe without an anchor, <laughs> maybe with, but you know, we gotta, you gotta, we, you know, we gotta really deal with the demons of doubt and trust ourselves as being guided. And I've just been repeating to myself, everything's gonna be all right. Everything's going to be okay. It's all right. It's all right. Relax. Chill out. Breathe. It's all going to be... <laughs> That's an easy mantra for me. It's all going to be okay. <laughs> Here's a little longer one. One last time. I know deep down that what's blocking my light is my fear of what lies ahead. So I promise to do what needs to be done and say all that needs to be said. May you speak it authentically. May you do it. Summon up your will and Aries do it and move into what lies ahead. Ow! Ride, Captain, ride upon your mystery ship. To a place up ahead, I, I forget all the words. It's a, it's a great song, though. I may have used it before, but if it's on the Spotify uh, Pele Report soundtrack, uh, it's, uh, you know, I've, it's, I, it's because I have already used it before. I have, I don't know, 52 hours of music or something on there now <laughs> with all those songs. It's a great playlist. Anyway, gotta go. Namaste. Aloha. So much love. <laughs>